that sound nice? Doesn't it sound good? It sounds really nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. First of all, um, I, before we do anything else, um, Jim or James? I don't know. Jim. Jim. I thought it was Jim. Jim Anderson is here. He's our sound technician. He's the one that got the board in there, and he's, the sound is like really good today. How many would say so? Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, so, so that's on our minds today. So, because what so we're going to start with on Facebook uh, Live site so about the sound system. And Rosemary, Rosemary Peterson told me that she's in Montana. She said families on her this on her mind. What else is on her mind this morning? Sound system. What was that? The sound system. I did get that one. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to put down guests here because um, Court and Melissa, did I get that right? Michelle. Michelle, I'm sorry. I know it's them. Court and Michelle are here, and so it's good to have you here this morning. So let's kind of wait with you today. You can, you can greet them sometime today. Um, if they ask you where the popcorn and hot dogs are, please understand that they've been to the movie night a couple times. And so, I'm sorry, there's no popcorn and hot dogs this morning. And it's darn, they're out the door, yeah. Anyway, so good to have you here So as our guest this morning. Um, any other guests that you have? Bob, would you introduce your... Uh, we have Genevieve and Aliata, my oldest son's daughters here. Turn around and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful job. Okay. And... We also have two new visitors, Don and Donna Casey. Where they, can they win? Oh, they're right here. They're right in front of me. So, good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Great. Well, good to have you here this morning. And I'm going to give you a hand for sitting so close. <laughs> to me or? No. Yes. Especially sitting so close to Bob Little. Okay, I'll just put that. I, I didn't want to add that, but anyway. I, it's nice that you're sitting so close, okay, because the favorite things are always way back. So anyway, it's good to have you all here this morning, and um, as we begin this morning, we were uh, have our praise here this morning, and so our gathering song is coming to His Presence. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. 
we continue with that pure faith.
we said, she looks so soft. The pastor can get off the floor, we're doing fine. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you very much. And let's sing um, ancient words as we prepare for our lessons for this morning. Martha, Martha, 
You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as we prepare for um, uh, our Gospel for today, let us sing our ascending uh, prayers on Hallelujah, Lord, for God, Jesus. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. They're sitting there and all these things are happening 
And this is, I think, at the point when Leonardo drew this was when Jesus said he was going to be betrayed. And you can see the hook on their faces like, oh my gosh, something really is going wrong here desperately. And you can see it on their faces there. Now, of course, if you're a woman looking at this picture, you'd be looking very quickly and say, there are no women in this picture, and you are right. Because they were all in the kitchen, probably. But anyway, they were making sure that everything was right, as our story on Mark that is about, too. But of course, we know that that was the male dominated world at that time, and so we didn't include women in pictures like this. So it's interesting, this dinner party and the questions that we might have. Oh, and to be over in the corner, listening. Well, as I was looking about pictures and everything, as I was Googling, it was so much fun to Google things and everything, I, I came across this other picture here, and I want you to guess what this, where this is at, and what this is a picture of. If you know what it is, first, you can. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's a movie. So this is not a real, it's not a, a real dinner, but... I think it's not It's a close. Would you, would you like, would you like another hint? They're on a boat. Okay. This is a scene from Titanic. That's right. And there is another Leonardo in this picture, too. Just like Leonardo da Vinci's in the bottom left hand corner there. That's where he's sitting there. What I found fascinating about this, I found this picture, I said, well, this would be kind of fun if people know what this is. But do you realize that they had a nine course meal? How many of you would like a nine course meal for your last meal? I mean, basically, that's what it was. A nine-course meal, a famous dinner, but again, for some of those people, a last supper, too. So let's go back to the question there. If you could have dinner with any famous person that you could have, who would you have dinner with? I'm going to step down here so I can hear better, because I can't hear it. Okay. So who would you have dinner with? Who's a, what's one possibility? Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Okay, there's a good one. Okay. Queen Elizabeth the first. Queen Elizabeth the first. Okay, all right, got it. Okay. Who else? Billy Bernie. Harris. Or Stephen Tyler. Stephen Tyler or who? Or Kamala Harris. Oh, Kamala Harris. Okay, all right. That'd be interesting. Okay. You have dinner with anyone that you want to. This is your chance. What's that? Not that much. Anyone else? Betty White. Oh, no, that would be fun. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Hamilton and Jefferson. Hamilton and Jefferson. Okay, all right. Isaiah and Jesus together. It's kind of like up on the Mount of Transfiguration, you know, where Moses and Jesus are talking and the disciples go, I don't know what to say. So it's kind of fun. So if you think about that for a minute, you're having this dinner, and um, you know people are coming over, and you want to make sure it's right. So my question there is: This is what would you do to get ready for a dinner party or have people over? What would you do? How many of you would probably clean the house? Okay, clean the house. Make sure everything. Yeah, make sure everything's in its right place. Make sure everything that's uh, in the closet so they don't see it, and all those wonderful things. You just do all those things, and you make sure that everything's right. You've got all the fruit work, and everything. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? At this point, is that you would probably be a Martha, right? How many of you would be Martha? Yes, definitely. We'd be Martha. We'd be running around making sure that everything's right. And you know what? That is okay. I keep telling people we need Marthas in the church. We do. Because there's all the stuff that happens behind, and we just need Martha's. That's not the problem. The problem is that what happens in the middle of all of that is that we get distracted and worried, and we forget what's important there. But we need. So if you're a Martha sitting out there, wondering to make sure that all the few things are right and everything, you know, oh, thank you for putting those up on the right order, too. There's someone that actually does that. A Martha for us, yes. So thank you for being a Martha. And so we would do all those things and we would get ready because we need Martha's sitting at Jesus' feet. There we are again. On the grass, under the tree, it's only about 70 degrees, it's really nice. 
but we are called to be, at this time, a Mary. One who sits, who listens, who ponders. Who, I think, sits there and just listens to Jesus' breathing and just takes it all in. She's called to be a Mary. And at times, we too need to be that, that weariness has to come out of just sitting at Jesus' feet. That's where we're at this morning. We're sitting at Jesus' feet. It's a wonderful place to be in this mix of crazy world, sitting at Jesus' feet. It's interesting because I, I kept thinking about this. I was thinking about another woman who laid at the feet of someone. And if you put that picture up for a second, <clears throat> Anybody know who this is in the Bible? This is a real Bible quiz here. <clears throat> Old Testament. Thank you. Good. You can whoever answer that. You can go start. Ruth. And Ruth's mother-in-law was Naomi. I happen to know this because my mother's name is Naomi, and she's got a sister named Ruth and a sister named Martha. <clears throat> My grandmother named the girls. My grandfather named the boys. They were Harold, Henry, and uh, Hank, you know, all H's. That's what my grandfather did. But my grandmother named the girls. So Naomi, the mother-in-law, she, she really loves Ruth and she wants the best for her. So she says, okay, I'm going to get you a husband. I love the story. It's the best story. One of the best stories in the Bible. So she says to Ruth, she says, I want you to follow Boaz and see where he lays down. And then I want you to go, and I want you to take the covers off of his feet. This is so sneaky. I can't believe it. Take the covers off of his feet, and then just lay there. Well, it starts to get a little cold, and what does Boaz do? He wakes up, right? And he's thinking, who uncovered my feet, and who are you? And it starts a relationship, a wonderful relationship. And it all starts with Ruth being there at the feet of Boaz. It all starts with us being at the feet of Jesus. I just started to ponder what that might look like and what that means for our lives today, sitting at the feet of Jesus. My first question I came up with is, is whose feet have you sat by? In the past, whose feet have you sat by? To listen to words of wisdom. Maybe it's our parents, aunts and uncles. Maybe it was that wise man or woman that lived down the street from you. Maybe it was someone that you just kind of bumped into, but you just got in a conversation. And of course you didn't sit down, but you were in the presence there. How about a teacher? Is there a teacher that you can think of that you could just sit there and listen to and just absorb all this information? Whose feet have you sat by to gain the wonderful knowledge that you have today? We could probably develop a wonderful list. And my second question, as I kept pondering all these things, is whose feet can you sit by today? Who do you trust to sit by so that you can gain knowledge about our world today, so that you can gain further insight. Who would you sit by? Who is someone that you trust enough to learn from? Who is it today that you could sit by? Think about that. And maybe sometime this week is calm or send them an email and text or say, you know, I was thinking about you this week, and I want to say thank you for being someone that I trust, that I would love to sit with, just to talk about the world today so that you can help keep my mind together there. Someone that we are sitting by. But whose feet can you sit by? Well, I think that we can sit by someone that needs someone to listen to them. Flip that over there. Whose feet can you sit by? You know someone that just needs someone to sit and listen to them today. Someone who's lost, someone who's lonely, someone who's having a hard time in life. That's the person, as we sit by Jesus' feet, that's the person that Jesus is calling us to sit by today. 
and put yourself in the position to listen. It's interesting because that's the position that Jesus is talking about today. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. It's not sitting at the head of the table. Jesus says, please don't do that. But sit at the foot of the table and get invited up. Don't sit in a place of honor, but sit in a place where you can take it all in and you can sit and listen to someone. Not being over them, but being beside them. And listen. And help. And reach out. Lower yourselves so that you can raise others up. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. And then as I thought about this, I just kept going up with these images of feet, and there's a couple times that, that Jesus' feet get anointed with oil. And Mary is one of those that does that. So Mary comes back into the story there. And so my question is also, whose feet can you anoint? Who can you honor today? Who can you honor today for being a person that follows Jesus Christ, for being a person that cares for other people, that shows love, grace, and peace? Who can you anoint today with words of just grace and just say, thank you for being who you are and anoint them with praise? Thank you for being the child of God that God made you and sharing God's love and peace this is what it means to sit at the feet of Jesus. To understand that this is what he wants our world today, is that we all sit down and we share the love and peace of God. And when we do that, you have beautiful feet. That's right. Maybe your feet don't exactly look like those beautiful feet, but your feet are beautiful. Let me tell you why. Because it says in the Bible, is the beautiful feet are the feet that share. By who you are, showing up on Sunday morning, by sharing God's love and peace, and by caring for other people, your feet are beautiful. And so today, sometime when you take your shoes and socks off, just look at your feet and go, Ma, 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 are you beautiful? <laughs> because you sat at the foot of Jesus. And Jesus tells us that you are beautiful. You're part of this creation. You're very, very special. And also, when we do that, when we kick up our feet, when we take a moment to rest, when we know that God is with us, and that all things are beautiful in God. At that point, when we go through life and we finally kick our feet up for the last time, I know and I hope and I pray that you will hear these words. Well done, good and faithful one. God loves you. God loves feet that share. God and Jesus love feet that honor. God, through Jesus Christ, loves the feet that listen to the lost, the lonely, and forgotten. God loves through Jesus Christ. And we love because we're constantly sitting at the foot of Jesus and telling the world that God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Our sermon hymn for this morning helps us again to focus in on what's important and that is seek ye first.
as you are able, as we proclaim our days into the words of the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the promises of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of my body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and as we move into our time of prayer this morning, again we'll have a moment of silence for uh, recent gun victims, gun violence, and then also our prayer uh, for the Ukraine.
birth of God and Christ, you fill all things. As your church gathers to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach humankind to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you reconcile all things, motivate those in power to end enslavement, dehumanization, and brutality of all kind, and to protect and improve the lives of indigenous peoples. God of grace, hear our prayer. Through Christ, you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. Bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead. We give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord God, as we gather at your table of grace, we do remind us of the hope that you give us in Jesus Christ. And today we lift up Ginger Perry, who passed into eternal life this past Friday morning. Lord God, we thank you that you gave her to us as a gift of life. And we continue to pray for her family and also her good friend Pony. And we pray that you remind all of us of the resurrection hope that we share in Jesus Christ. And as Jesus lives, we too shall live. God of grace. And Lord, today we lift up and pray for just this incomprehensible span of creation, glimpses of which we make possible by the technology of the James Webb Space Telescope. We pray for those who are now facing uh, down a new and most contagious variant of the COVID virus, and they lift up uh, John Ebinger and others. We pray for healthcare workers who are overwhelmed and burnt out. And Lord God, we pray for our, our ELCA Churchwide Assembly as they will be meeting in August. We pray that you continue to, to shine your light through this church that we may be a beacon of hope and joy in our world. God of grace. And Lord God, you are the Lord of comfort and of healing. And today we pray for these who need you in a special way. We pray for Sandy, Miriam, Larry, Harriet, Don, Connie, Grace, Barker, John and Jan, Lois, Carol, Ernest, June, Janet, Don and Janet, Christy, Naomi, Candace, Jimmy, John, and Tracy. And those that we mentioned in our hearts at this time. Lord God, we pray that you'll continue to walk with these people. You'll bring them the comfort, healing, and hope that they need to meet the days ahead. We pray for their family members, for their healthcare workers, and for caregivers. Continue to lift them up, Lord. Be with them and walk with them. God of grace. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit. We entrust these broken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please stand and greet those around you with the peace of the Lord as you are comfortable.
Oh, take your time. That's okay. We've got all day. <laughs> Again, it's good to have you here. Glad that you're here worshiping with us. And uh, we'll receive the offering for this morning. Again, thank you for your uh, sharing of your time and talents and your treasures. Um, as we met at our council meeting on Tuesday night, um, our, our treasure is a very happy person these days because um, because of your gifts and the sharing of your abundance. And so thank you for that. Um, we're able to continue to reach out with God's love and grace. And it's all because of your efforts and your time, talents, and treasures. Let us pray together the offering prayer. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. And hear this invitation to communion to all. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your heart. Thank you, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Who on this day overcame death and, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Lord's table. Please follow the directions and coming forward to receive the meal. And uh, just a reminder that.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer after communion. Life giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive the blessing. God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and forevermore. Amen. We have our announcements. Joanne's ready to go. <laughs> well, first, we were happy to have the guests today. We really, really welcome you. Today, and you are invited to join in a time of refreshments following the worship. You can also bring your refreshments to the boardroom for a quick Bible study this morning. The book club meets on Tuesday at Kathy Little's home at 4 o'clock. Check your bulletin for more details. Choir rehearsal is Wednesday at 10 a.m., followed by Bible study at 11. Banning Family Film Fest is this Wednesday. The fun begins at 7 p.m. and the movie will begin at dusk. The movie this week is Jungle Cruise. The Blood Drop, that's here on Thursday at 2.30 p.m. and you can still sign up online. Other activities upcoming is a special taste of Hawaii. Ohana Sunday will be held next Sunday. Hawaiian attire is welcome. Special Midsummer Potluck will be following worship. The bus trip to the Aquarium of the Pacific is July 26th at 8 p.m. at 8 a.m. Please sign up today. We want to fill the bus and have a great time. Thank you to Bob and Kathy Little for the donation of flowers this morning on the altar. Please take your bulletins home now and refer to them and share the information as we invite and welcome mothers to all the activities here in our stairs. Uh, we have a sign up for the women's uh, retreat for August, so I will be in the parking. See me, you can sign it up and pay later, but I need your name on the list so we will know how to. Uh, okay, so the women's retreat, what was the date again? August? August what again? The, the date? Yeah, the date. What's the date? 20, August 20th, thank you. Okay. Uh, and so sign up today, see if we're letting have any questions. It should be out there uh, uh, tackling you if you don't sign up. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay. And also, just see, we need to know today if you're going on the bus trip to the aquarium because you have to buy the tickets, is that right? So today is kind of it. So talk to Justine about that. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, get tickets for you and everything else. Otherwise, you will have a nice bus ride and have to stand outside.
Okay, I just to mention that if you want to focus back here, that be one. I'm not going to lay hands on the equipment because I'll probably mess it up. I'll just put my hand down right there. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, siblings in Christ, we give thanks to God and we see God's blessing as we dedicate and set apart and bless our audio and visual equipment to the glory of God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, creator of the universe, for you have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children, and you've invited us to praise with lives of love, justice, and joy. Send your blessing upon our audio and visual equipment, which we set apart today. May it may increase our vision of your glory, to remind us of your goodness, and to support our call to worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you for these gifts and talents of those who will operate and use this equipment to assist us to worship and praise you, our Creator God. May this equipment help us to worship you and bring us closer to the reality of your call to worship in spirit and truth. We thank you for the faithful support that enables us to continue to care for this place. We thank you for the gifts of time and talent and treasure that enable us to enrich our worship life together. To you, O God, be the glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God is good. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.